Today, I'm going to show you how to build a compact and fully modular mini eGPU using affordable components, potentially for half the price of commercial options like the GPD G1, and maybe even with better performance. This is a prototype I put together last year, so some parts might be a bit dated, but the core idea remains solid. Let's dive in and see how easily you can build your own budget-friendly eGPU. Consumer gadgets are still shockingly inefficient when it comes to space. While the semiconductor industry keeps pushing for higher performance density at the microcontroller level, the overall product packaging for these advancements haven't kept up. Apple's M-series devices are a rare exception, but most companies just aren't prioritizing this. One particular product that's always bothered me is the eGPU, especially the bulky overpriced enclosures that connect via Thunderbolt or Oculink. Even with the rise of the so-called mini eGPUs, most still come with weaker GPUs at sky-high prices, despite the availability of more powerful compact alternatives and are often non-upgradable by design. As mobile and small form factor computing continues to grow, we should be demanding better solutions for accessible high-performance portable setup. That's what this video is all about. For this build, I'm using a GT1030 for demonstration, but you can swap in any low-profile GPU like the Gigabyte or ASUS 4060 low-profile cards. I'll actually be working on a future project featuring a 4060 class card, so stay tuned if you are interested in something a bit more powerful. Now since external PCIe protocols like Thunderbolt or Oculink are bandwidth limited, you don't want to go too high-end on your GPU. That said, a 4060 card should be more than enough for mobile computing, especially considering pre-built mini GPUs often include weaker cards like the RX 7600M. The key component for this setup is an NVMe to PCIe X16 converter with a dedicated power channel to fit the GPU. We will also need an NVMe to Thunderbolt or Oculink adapter. I'm using one originally designed for NVMe drives, but a dedicated PCIe to Thunderbolt adapter would be ideal for this as well and costs about the same. Just make sure your board's USB-C port properly supports PCIe lanes. For power, the adapter I'm using has a 12V input, so I'm feeding it through a SATA 12V input port. If your adapter requires both 12V and 5V, a Pico PSU like the ones that I used in the past builds would be a great option. To finish things off, I'm adding a few extra touches, an LED light switch as a power indicator, a small 12V exhaust fan, and a metal DC port with a cover. Now, let's get building. For the build process, firstly we remove the GPU's I.O. bracket and connect the PCIe to NVMe converter to the graphics card. I built a small riser for the Thunderbolt adapter to create some spacing, so we will install that onto the NVMe to Thunderbolt card first, then attach our GPU setup to it. Once everything fits properly, I secured it with some double-sided tape and reinforced it further using thermal resistant tapes. Next, we move on to the power connections. I took the female end of the connector cable that was prepped earlier, sealed off the two 5V leads to ensure they are insulated, and got the 12V cables ready for connections. Before hooking it up, we test our 12V adapter to confirm the exact voltage. Then I checked the wiring diagram for the power switch from its Amazon listing page and connected the power adapter, DC female port and the 12V exhaust fan accordingly. Finally, I attached the power cable from the PCIe converter board to our power setup to ensure a steady 12V flow. A quick test confirms that everything is working as expected. Now, if you have seen my previous videos, you will know that this is the stage where I usually mess things up pretty bad with my award-winning craftsmanship in woodworking. I had pre-cut some wooden panels for the enclosure along with the required holes in them, so rather than dragging you through the enclosure building process, I'll show a quick time lapse, including my struggle with redoing the DC port connections which I shouldn't have finalized before installing the DC port onto the case first. After a few frustrating hours, everything finally came together and I could peel off the holding tape to reveal its Frankenstein-like beauty. Time for some testing now. Since eGPUs aren't typically hot swappable, the first step after assembling the build is to power everything down on my laptop before connecting it to the Thunderbolt port. Once it's done, I check the device manager to confirm the GPU is detected. Next, I install the necessary drivers, whether it's Nvidia, AMD or whatever brand GPU you're using. Once the drivers are set up, everything appears as expected, and I can connect an external monitor to the GPU to verify it's working. For performance testing, I ran some MSI combustor benchmarks and everything looked solid. And just for fun, I played some high definition videos from my own channel to see how well it handled the video rendering. Safe to say, it's working perfectly. So if you don't want to spend a fortune on a locked-in eGPU setup, give this DII approach a shot. 
And if you're into 3D modeling, you could probably design an even sleeker custom enclosure. So the possibilities are endless. I have got another project coming up where I'll be building an Oculink based eGPU with a similar setup. So stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.